Hello friends, hello professionals, and welcome back to my channel, The Sea of Regulation. Simone here, and this was a video that I was supposed to do quite a while ago. I asked in one of my earlier videos whether anyone was interested in knowing more about trust and corporate services providers, and people did reply. So this is that video. I am going to be talking about trusts, companies, licensees that are regulated in some jurisdictions, and not others, what it all means, how they're connected to offshore financial centers, or at least typically, and what they do. And it's something that I kind of wanted to know from 13 years old that led me on this career path. But before I dive into the content, let me get my usual disclaimers out of the way. I am not a lawyer, and I am not a professional advisor. And the views on this channel are definitely all my own and do not reflect the views of any regulatory authority or international standard setter. And so what that means is you shouldn't take this away as any advice. This is just for education, awareness, a discussion, my views. So let's dive in. Trust and corporate services providers. They may be called by different names in different jurisdictions and by different international standard setting bodies. I've seen corporate services providers, I've seen company services providers, I've seen trust service providers, and those are just specific to what a particular organization would do. But grouping them all together, I prefer the term trust and corporate services providers, not companies. Now, why is that? That's because, well, when it comes to legal structures, there's a lot more than just incorporating a company. You see, there are lots of different structures that TCSPs, as they're abbreviated, can provide to their clients. And their clients include just about anyone. It's not just the ultra high net worth individuals that incorporate companies or form trusts. But before we get into who their clients may be, let's talk about what TCSPs do. Now, in many jurisdictions, that I am familiar with that are typically given bad names because we actually regulate sectors that are not regulated in some G20 countries. But anyways, in some of the jurisdictions that I'm familiar with, TCSPs are regulated both prudentially and for AML CFT purposes. And that has been occurring for over three decades. Now, in those jurisdictions, there is a regulatory framework that has been evolved over a number of years so much so that there's an international standard that is applied to them. And if you're wondering about international standard setting bodies, I did a video a few weeks back and I'll link that in the description below. But the international standard setter that sets out what standards are required for proper regulation of trust and corporate services providers is the group of international financial center supervisors. I'll also link some information in relation to them in the description below. But TCSPs incorporate companies, they form trusts, they also form other legal arrangements. Now, if you've been following along with FATF, you will know that legal arrangements is covered by its own recommendation. That will be recommendation 25. Bonus points if you can get some of the other recommendations that are relevant in reviewing these structures. But TCSPs do a lot more than just incorporate structures or form structures for their clients and sit back. You see, they actually do a bit more, and in some cases, a lot more. They can actually provide administrative services or accounting services or other services in support of that company or corporation or trust or other legal structures provided that they are regulated to do so in the jurisdictions that they are regulated. Now, why is that important? You wouldn't want just anyone who is unqualified to be handling your insurance matters or someone who is definitely not qualified, doesn't have the assets to provide you with banking services. There are certain minimum criteria that are required for those institutions to be regulated in the banking and insurance sector specifically. But as it relates to trust and corporate services providers, in a number of jurisdictions, they are not regulated. And the activities that they carry out in relation to companies and trusts and other structures can be quite extensive. So let's take your average company. 
let's, let's use a coffee shop, not that large international coffee company that we're all familiar with, but just let's use a corner coffee shop. That coffee shop could be owned by John, and John may enter into a partnership with Sue to run this particular coffee shop. Now, what would be the best structure for that? Would it be a partnership or would it be a company or would it be something else? You see, these are some of the questions that a trust and corporate services provider can help you answer. Now, let's say for this example, if they set up a company, why shouldn't they just set it up under their own names and have a doing business as the best cup coffee shop or um, cafe latte? coffee shop or simulati. I think I see that coming up in a movie that's about to drop in a few days. Hmm. I'm a red pill girl. But anyways, in relation to the coffee shop, you would want to limit your liability. Now, in that coffee shop, I walk in, slip and fall, and I sue them. Sorry, the injuries were quite extensive. What happens if I sue them and they were doing business as, well, if I'm, I'm you know, have a good lawyer and I win that suit, it's not just the assets of the enterprise that they've entered into for this coffee shop that they'll have to sell to pay my claim and you know damages. They will have to actually give from their personal assets. But what a company does is it limits your liability. Now that is one of the reasons that people use companies and like I said, it's a corner coffee shop and that corner coffee shop is not a multi-million dollar company, and Joe and Sue are not millionaires by any stretch of the imagination, but they can benefit from using a company. And they would approach a trust and corporate services provider to incorporate them, and these things happen every day. It is not about shell companies that some journalists just decide to put out as a thing that happens in a number of jurisdictions that they're unfamiliar with. Trust and corporate services providers also provide post-incorporation services for those companies and post-authorization services for other structures. So for example, John and Sue, let's use them. I haven't sued them, really, I haven't sued them. Let's say that they have to apply for a trade license with their government and the government will want to know that they're in good legal standing with all the relevant bodies. And that may include paying social security and taxes, but it also means that the government will want proof that the company is still in good standing. And so what would happen to John and Sue? They would go to their service provider and ask them to provide them with a certificate of good standing that evidences the fact that the company is still active, still on the books, and still operating in a legally prudent manner. Now, in a number of jurisdictions that tend to vilify some of these smaller territories, I don't know whether they appreciate the fact that that is one of the things that they should be doing in relation to their due diligence checks in relation to a company incorporated in one of these jurisdictions that regulates trust and corporate services providers. And that's a mouthful, but it's important because context is always important. Actually, context is king. And when it comes to trust and corporate services providers, let's get into the actual structure. So they themselves have to be an incorporated company in many of the jurisdictions that I'm familiar with. They can't be a partnership. They cannot be established as a trust. They must have a board of directors who are sufficiently competent and capable. That board must also address their minds to senior management, staffing, resources, there are also requirements for regulatory deposits, provision of audited financial statements, other prudential reporting. It's a lot that they have to do. They have to appoint a compliance officer and an, and an MLRO. So it's not that they actually just pop up a shop and it's a rubber stamp and all of a sudden they're providing these services. That's not the case. There's also post-licensing approvals that regulators engage in. So if they change ownership, the regulator is involved. If they want to add or remove a director, the regulator is involved. If they want to diversify the business that they offer and expand it, so say they were only offering company services and they want to expand to trust, the regulator is involved. If they are active for a number of years, 
they'll be subject to inspections, just like a bank, just like an insurer. They're regulated to basically pretty high standards in these jurisdictions, but not in some others. And if you know of a jurisdiction where TCSPs aren't regulated prudentially and for AML CFT purposes, definitely drop it in the comments below. There's a lot more that I can say in relation to TCSPs, and it's one of the areas that I think I'm really good at. You see, I was on the core working group that developed the international standard, and it's one of the things, one of the experiences, actually, that I am really proud to have been exposed to. So if you have any more questions in relation to TCSPs, their regulation, and what I think on just the way the world is going in relation to the discussions on beneficial ownership, for example. Definitely just look in the description. You'll find me on LinkedIn. Feel free to subscribe. Drop your comments below. And remember to do the YouTube thing, right? Make sure you like the video because it helps the algorithm. I saw that YouTube disabled dislikes. Hmm. Also, make sure you share this with your friends if they're just curious. If they are thinking about a business, definitely figure out who your nearest TCSP is and call them up. See whether they can help you with that entrepreneurial venture that you're interested in. But I'll end the video here and I'll listen out for comments and questions to see whether I need to do a part two to this video. But until then, guys, I'll definitely catch you on my next one.